In the last lectures, we looked at what it is that rationalists claim when it comes to knowledge. They believe that we can come to learn facts simply by thinking, or to put this technically, that we can establish synthetic truths a priori. We've been looking at how one particular rationalist, Descartes, explains how we can come to knowledge through reason. Descartes claims that we use intuition and deduction, mental processes, to achieve knowledge. Last time we looked at how Descartes thinks that we come to knowledge of the cogito as an a priori intuition. We now need to look at how Descartes thinks we can extend this knowledge by the process called deduction. Deduction is a process of the mind, just like an intuition. In a way, deduction is, a connect, is connecting clear and distinct ideas and seeing how they can lead us to more knowledge. Look at this deduction above, which simply, simplifies how Descartes goes about adding together clear and distinct ideas, which are the products of intuition, to arrive at other knowledge. So we go from the clear and distinct idea that I know I exist as an imperfect being. We add to that another clear and distinct idea. I know all ideas are caused by something. And then a further clear and distinct idea. I have the idea of God, a perfect being. Therefore, through deduction, there must be a God. Now we know that Descartes has his work cut out to reach certain knowledge just by thinking. Think back to the first meditation and the third wave of doubt in which Descartes' scepticism takes a global form. He wonders whether all of his senses, his knowledge of anything, including mathematical truths such as 2 plus 3 equals 5, might be due to a deceiving demon. So in order to reach any more knowledge, Descartes has to show that there is a God and that this kind of God would not allow him to be deceived. But before we look at Descartes' arguments for God, we need to understand the kind of logic and argument Descartes is attempting. There are mainly two types of argument that we look at in philosophy. The first one here is deductive. Descartes is using deductive arguments that can be defined as an argument in which the conclusion is defined by its reasons or premises. If the premises or reasons are true, then the conclusion has to be true. Look at this first argument about Socrates. Premise one, Socrates is a man. Premise two, all men are mortal. Therefore, the conclusion is that Socrates is mortal. A deductive argument leads to certainty if the premises are true. Have a look at the argument underneath. It's not quite the same. Premise one, Socrates is a horse. Premise two, all men are mortal. So the conclusion is Socrates is mortal. Now that doesn't work because the premises do not entail the conclusion and the conclusion does not entail the premises. Deductive arguments are very different. They use their reasons or premises to build a case or lead to a conclusion that is probable or likely. Look at Bill. Premise one, Bill is 96 years old. Premise two, Bill has been suffering from pneumonia for six months. Therefore, the conclusion, Bill will not be able to run the marathon this year. We do not reach certainty with these kinds of arguments. And I think you'll know that Descartes wants much more than this, and he therefore takes a deductive route. For the exam, you need to know that the following arguments are examples of knowledge as a priori deductions. We'll be looking at the trademark argument in this lecture and then go on to the cosmological and ontological arguments later. The 
The trademark argument is an argument for the existence of God. The gist of the argument is this, that God can be the only reason for the idea of me having an idea of God in my mind. And it runs as follows. The cause of anything must at least be as perfect as what it causes. My ideas are caused by something. I am not perfect, but I have the idea of God, a perfect being. I cannot cause that idea. Only a perfect God, a perfect being could cause that idea. And so God must exist. The trademark argument is using the intuition that God exists and as an idea in my mind. I am not even close to God in terms of my capabilities and powers. So where could this idea have come from? The only possible answer is that the idea of God has been put there by God, like a little signature of an artist on a painting. There is some sign of the original artist or creator in us, says Descartes. You need to be aware of empiricist responses to each of these arguments, including the trademark argument, and we use Hume for this. David Hume is all over any argument that uses the idea of cause or causation to argue for God. Remember, Hume is a strict empiricist, so examines what we can actually prove. And he asks big questions of what we mean by cause. Hume says a lot about causation. One of his main points is that causation isn't a thing. The term cause is a word we give to one event that comes before another event on a regular basis. Hume calls this a constant conjunction of two events. Think about what we mean when we use the word cause. Imagine someone has been asked to keep a food diary from their doctor. On Monday, they have cheese and toast. They get a rash. On Tuesday, they have beans on toast. No rash. But Wednesday, lasagna, and there's that rash again. Thursday, chips. No rash. What we can see is that a rash follows dairy. Not just once, but regularly. Hume would say, that these events are constantly conjoined or linked. And when there is a constant conjunction between events, we use the word cause. For us to know whether we can talk of a cause, surely we must have experience of what things follow other things on a regular basis. Look at this example by John Hospers. Hospers says, imagine you clap your hands and then five seconds later, you hear thunder. 10 minutes pass by and you do it again. You clap and then five seconds later, the thunder comes. At this stage, you're probably not thinking that the clapping is causing the thunder. But what if over a series of 100 times, you clap and only when you do so, five seconds later, you hear the thunder. Then maybe you do think about cause. It is the regularity of the two events that, that lead us to label a cause. The thing that gets us thinking about cause here is regularity. So cause, causation is not a term that can be used without experience. It cannot be used a priori. Surely it is only a term that can be used as the result of the experience of two events being constantly conjoined and therefore an a posteriori claim.
Hume's point is targeting this part of the trademark argument. But Hume goes on. And then we look at the first premise of the argument. The cause of anything must at least be as perfect as what it causes. Hume claims that this might be true in terms of the physical world, but not when it comes to ideas. I can have ideas of much greater things than me. I can have the idea of a much stronger and faster runner than Usain Bolt, and so can Usain Bolt. Just because I have the idea of something greater doesn't mean that that thing, the athlete, or indeed God, must exist. Hume explained that the idea of God is a complex idea. It is invented by our minds by using our sensations of the world. Just like we invent a mermaid by using our ideas of a fish and a woman, we invent God by combining and exaggerating human attributes such as power. That's where the idea of God comes from, not from God, an external being. So in this video, we've looked at a priori deductions from Descartes. We focused in on the trademark argument and some of the empiricist responses to this argument, 